watching ESPN's Champ Week. It's the Ivy League Women's Basketball Tournament presented by TIAA from a packed Levian Gymnasium on the campus of Columbia University. We welcome you to the Ivy League Championship. The number two seed, the Lions, set to take on the number one seed, the Princeton Tigers. These two teams had to put in work in the semifinal round. Princeton pulled out a win against their rivals from Penn. Columbia held off Harvard here on their home floor to set up this matchup in the championship. And it is great to have you with us here in New York City with Christy thomas Scuddy. I am Eric Freed. This should be an amazing atmosphere. It should be an amazing game. The two meetings this season between these two teams were split. Princeton won on their home floor. Columbia won here against the Tigers. And the difference here was Abby Shu, the player of the year. I'm eager to see just the inner matchups, the chess match between these two coaches because there is great talent on the floor here this afternoon. Including great players for both teams that are among the very best in the country. They've proven that whoever they've taken on. And Caitlin Chen does it time and again for Princeton. One of the best playmakers in the country. She's a dynamic table setter. She can create her own shot. Her jump shot is deadly. When she can get in the middle third and get below the free throw line, she's practically money for the Tigers. She's best in transition. She sets the table, not just for herself, but for her teammates. And now we get to talk about the Ivy Player of the Year, Abby Shu, known throughout her career as a three-point shooter. But yesterday, she showed how much her game has grown, doing it off the bounce, doing it with defense, setting a career high in rebounds with 14. But it was all the other little things, the hustle plays that extended opportunities for the Lions. And most importantly, she showed her future career in maybe football as a wide receiver with a huge <laughs> two points. And a beautiful little juke like a receiver would do to get that basket. Shu, very impressive in the semifinal. The Ivy League Player of the Year showed out here on her home floor. And Caitlin Chen, the leading scorer and the leader in assists for this Princeton team. She has been the most outstanding player of Ivy Madness in each of the last two seasons. We are ready. The fans are packed in. They are still filing in. There aren't any other seats left here in this building. January 20th, a win for Princeton down at Chadwin Gym. Columbia won here on February 24th. We're ready for meeting number three. This one for the Ivy Tournament Championship in the opening tip controlled by Princeton. Because they had the better net, they are the number one seed, so they are the home team here in this showdown of Columbia. And a great start for Madison St. Rose, who went for a team-high 19 on Friday. The starting five for Columbia, Cecilia Collins, second team all Ivy, the Henderson sisters, Bliss, the younger sister, Kitty, the junior, both from Australia, Abby Shu, we've talked about, and Susie Raffu, sophomore from England. And that's going to be a possession for Princeton as the Tigers will come down the floor with their starting five. That includes Ellie Mitchell, the three time Ivy Defensive Player of the Year. Sky Belker is a freshman. Madison St. Rose playing well and Chet Nowecki. Seven offensive rebounds Friday in Princeton's win. Well, expect Princeton to have the advantage on the glass, but right now, Madison St. Rose has come out looking to win a championship. As I mentioned, went for 19 in the win against Penn, averaging better than 14 a game. And Eric, we're going to see a lot of player to player from both of these teams today. Both coaches saying, we're going to switch things up slightly from our last meeting. Trying to get Shu going, outstanding three-point shooter. Here's the double on Collins, cutting to the basket in the first two to Raffu. She played well against Harvard, 11 points, eight coming in the second half in the win for the Lions. There's Chen on the drive on the baseline, can't get it to go, but a rebound for Mitchell. I think Columbia got away with one there because I do not think they want Raffu matched up with Chen in the half court, but here we go again. I guess they're going with some length here. Chen with the kick, the freshman with the three, and a great start for Princeton from the floor. And Eric, in late February, when Columbia got the win here, they had such a great start. Their tempo was great, and Princeton was the one struggling to get going. They flipped the script here already today. Carla Barubi in her fourth season, 99 wins already at Princeton, 483 in her career, had great success as the head coach at Tufts for 17 years, went to four Final Fours in the Division Three tournament. Kitty Henderson trying to work on Chen. Matthew travels. Columbia turned the basketball over 15 times against Harvard. They are coached by a Columbia alum, 
Class of 07, a point guard for the Lions, Megan Griffith, in her eighth season now, all-time leader in wins, and she looks like she could still play. That means she <laughs> picked up a lot of wins in a short period of time. Well, let's just face it, both these coaches could probably still play. The added twist, Megan was an assistant coach at Princeton for six seasons when Courtney Banghart was taking that level to national renown, that program to national renown. Nowicki kept it alive, but Kitty Henderson comes away. Henderson on the push, Princeton getting back in transition. That's one of the keys today for Carlo Berube. Absolutely. Columbia loves to push. Absolutely. Columbia wants pace. They want to score quickly before the defense can get set because, once again, this is the Ivy's best percentage defense in Princeton Tigers. That's a travel, so another turnover for Columbia. Okay, so you got the number one offense in Columbia, the number one defense in Princeton. Break this game down for me. How do you think it's going to unfold? Well, it's really going to be because both coaches have said we're going to do a lot of switching because. Princeton type offense by both teams a lot of movement and so you've got to be able especially against Shu to switch out because she is so good from three the communication has to be on point and I think it's more the forwards that are going to have to be big because both coaches will switch one through four here this afternoon Jack loves to go to work in the paint off the mark defended well by Columbia and here come the Lions down by five opening minutes Ivy League tournament championship game Collins for two. Collins rips down the rebound. Well, I asked Carla Burby today about pace. She said, hey, when we can run in transition, we want to run, but we have to be smart about when we need to pull it out because we know the kind of runs that Columbia can go on. Shoe launches off the mark for three, and Chen will just let it fall out of play. And it'll be Princeton basketball. First substitution comes for Columbia. Sophomore Perry Page from Pittsburgh. Three points, couple of rebounds, three steals in 19 minutes yesterday for the Lions as Rafu takes a seat. She was really good with Perry Page yesterday, especially on the defensive end. And big task for her when she's on Ellie Mitchell to try to keep her off the offensive glass. St. Rose off to a good start. Trying to back in, turn around the lefty, can't get it. Bliss Henderson with the rebound. Collins can't handle it. And it's another turnover. That is four turnovers here in the opening minutes for Columbia. And that was the Achilles heel in the very first matchup of the season when Columbia lost because Princeton was able to take advantage of the turnovers and scored 22 points off of the Lions' miscues. Megan Griffith said, we have to take care of the ball here this afternoon if we're going to have a chance. Shoe defending St. Rose. Nicole Stevens into the game, defending the freshman Belker, runs into the screen from Nowecki. There's Nowecki, strong post player. Shows that strength for two. And that's a good sign for Princeton. If they're scoring around the rim, they struggled to finish in the last matchup. Already Nowecki getting in the scoring column. Still waiting for Shu to get her first points. Stevens tries to work on the defensive player of the year. Princeton all over the basketball. Nothing coming easy right now for Columbia. They get another stop through the Tigers. Here they come in transition. Mitchell not considered a scoring threat, but don't sleep on her. Four different scores already for Princeton. Mitchell, six points yesterday. And here's Chet Nowecki just going to work in the paint, using the footwork and using the strength to get by the defenders and kiss it off the glass. And Eric, I believe Princeton just got a delayed game warning for knocking the ball back after that last score. Kitty Henderson off the mark. She'll go to the free throw line, though, to shoot a couple. Mitchell picks up her first personal. And waiting for Kitty Henderson to go to the line. She was outstanding at the stripe yesterday, 8 for 11. Turns out Columbia needed those free throws because Harvard 
fought tough right to the final seconds of that game, as you knew they would. Mitchell goes to the bench with that first personal. Parker Hill into the game for Princeton. We'll have you covered tomorrow. Selection Sunday starts at 6 Eastern with Sports Center on ESPN. Reese Davis and the entire crew will look at the men's field of 68 as the brackets are announced. That's followed by bracketology, breakdowns of each region. And then at 8, the women's field of 68 is revealed with bracketology and a complete breakdown right after. There's some token full court pressure here by Columbia, trying to slow Princeton down in the half court. Speaking of bracketology, we will hear from Charlie Cream after this upcoming media timeout. He'll tell us what this game means, how it impacts not just the Ivy League, but how it impacts the national picture. Because there's some teams watching with great interest here today. There could be a bid stealer in this game. Chia off the mark. Here's Shu with the push. Henderson. Not much happening there. Good defense again for Princeton. And that gets us to our media timeout. As I mentioned, the bracketologist standing by for his analysis of what this game means next. This exclusive presentation of college basketball is presented by TIAA's promise of a guaranteed retirement paycheck for life is a promise that pays off. from coast to coast because you take a look at that last four in Arizona Vanderbilt Texas A&M Marquette and the first four out these two these teams all there are watching closely because if Princeton wins nothing really changes Princeton is in the tournament because of their body of work for the season they don't need a win here today but if Columbia wins then the Ivy League is a two-bid league this year and that's a bit stealer for one of those teams you saw listed on the screen and right now Niagara out of the Mac is also trying to steal a bid they're up seven on Fairfield that would be another bubble that would pop great defense coming back on that play for Princeton Chia getting the block actually Chia five eight times this perfectly and just knocks it out and you see the emotion that she showed after the block now in the Mac we think that's a one-bit league no matter what happens right because Fairfield even though they're ranked their net wasn't great. Oh, there's going to be a illegal screen set by Fliss Henderson. Do you want me to set up the Charlie Cream signal again? I know Please, you're the one I who activated the signal. <laughs> well, I'm assuming he's watching right now, but right, Charlie, I let, said earlier let, this week that they let, were in. Let Christy know, Charlie, because yes, I know you, you two have your own separate chat that's been going on for about two months about every single combination that could happen for any game going on at any time in the country. I like to consider myself one of Charlie's angels. We'll just leave it at that. <laughs> And off to Chen. Chen gets a look. A little too strong. And an offensive rebound for Princeton. St. Rose can't get it. And Collins is fouled by Chen on the reach. Probably just looks at her star player and just says, don't do that. Just don't do that. Rebounding is going to be very interesting to track here today because these are the top two teams in rebounding margin in the Ivy League. Columbia is number one. However, in the two meetings this year, it was a big advantage for Princeton on the boards. They were a plus 10 and a plus 9 in those two games. And it's more importantly, what do they do with those? Because we know how good Princeton is on the offensive glass. They are averaging on the season 13 0 boards a game. It's when they can convert those into threes, into extra points that had Megan Griffin really nervous about this matchup. There's Collins. Collins will launch for three. Cecilia Collins at 32% from outside the arc. That's her 26th made three of the season. And it's a three-point game. And both coaches talked about how they have to exploit the mismatches because of the switches, and that's what happened the last time down for Collins. Chen off the dribble against Shu for two. So far, Abby Shu just one field goal attempt so far, Christy. And guess who took a charge? Ellie Mitchell takes the contact. And there was a switch off of the on-ball screen, and you see the post player now on to Stewart Collins. She sees it. It's a short closeout, so she raises up and knocks down the three. 
How about Ellie Mitchell? She took the decisive charge yesterday against Harvard with the game on the line. Huge call right there helped Princeton pull out that victory. Against Penn, I should say, my bad. Well, again, that's what you expect out of the defensive player of the year. Not just this year, over the last three years. How about the pass, but how about the recovery, the block shot by Page? And here come the Lions. Columbia can play some defense, too. And Page has the mismatch down low. They can get her the ball. On the cut to the basket, fumbling the basketball was Henderson. And take it away. Here comes Princeton. Chen drops it down. Chia, beautiful finish. The assist to Caitlin Chen. Where we both talked about how Chia was not great. She wasn't exactly locked in. It's a big stage. New opportunity for her. She has come out today much more in control and making a big impact for Princeton. I think they said they're going to correct the call here, and it's going to be Princeton basketball. The initial call was Columbia ball. What you're seeing, the defense by both teams and the defense that allows Princeton to get out and run in transition for the easy two for Chia. Inside of two minutes to go here in our opening quarter, Princeton trying to defend their Ivy Tournament title. They've won the last four. Good start here on Columbia's home floor. Rolling to the basket, looking for the two and getting it. Tabitha Amanze, the sophomore, getting an early touch and score. Seven different scores here in the first quarter for Princeton. Carla Barubi has raved about the depth for this year's team. It's showing here in this championship game. I asked Carla yesterday or two days ago, what is what makes this team better? She said, we have more depth. We can go 11 deep and not miss a beat. Henderson launches for three. Kitty Henderson knocks down the triple. St. Rose trying to take shoe, but then threw it away. Thought it was Mitchell cutting the basket. Mitchell put on the brakes. On the reverse, that won't drop, and a rebound for Amante. Carla Barubi says slow things down inside of a minute now to go here in the first. Both these teams know one another's play call so well. As soon as we, the offense makes the play call, the defense is echoing it, and the coaches are getting them in position to defend. Mitchell cuts to the basket and bails Amante out. Good heads-up play for the two. And at the end of the day, coaches will make play calls, but players have to make plays. Great movement without the ball there by Ellie Mitchell. Columbia holding for one. Shoe just one field goal attempt here in the first. They set a screen to get her wide open for three. Could not keep her quiet for the entire quarter. She knocks down the three-pointer. Princeton did a great job, but Shu, before the buzzer, knocks down the three. The first points of the game for Abby Shu, and this is all about timing. She is flat-footed. She makes the defender think she's not going to get it, but now she's feeding off Kitty Henderson, who's making the three. And you're seeing ball movement without Players moving without the ball to get the scores. And then the biggest shot for Abby Shue of the first quarter. Movement without, spot up, knock it down. Seventh meeting all time between Princeton and Columbia. The two meetings this year, January 20th and Jadwin, Princeton won at 80 to 65. Ellie Mitchell had 14 points, 15 rebounds. Madison St. Rose was great, had 21 points. The Tigers went on a 16-2 run late to pull away. February 24th, in this building, it was a different result, and the atmosphere was electric here at Columbia. Well, it was the Abby Shoe Show. 26 points, broke the 2,000 plateau mark on the season. She was so good down in crunch time to make sure the Lions got the victory on their home court, which Prince allowed them to get a share of the Ivy Championship. Uh, Princeton was ranked 25th in the AP poll at the time, so it was Columbia's first ever win over an AP Top 25 in program history. And the crowd made a huge difference in that game, and they are packed in here. This was a quick sellout. Columbia survived the semifinal round to get here, but you can see they are packed into this building. It holds 2,700, so they say. I'm thinking there's more than that. <laughs> Second quarter underway. Columbia got shoe going in the final play of the first quarter. 
See if they can get it to her again. Plus Henderson off the shoe, defended by Chen. Well, so far, Prince is doing a really good job of switching up in the shoe, not giving her any space to get the shot off. Stevens to shoe, shoe sets for another three, and knocks it down. Abby shoe, back-to-back threes. Columbia has made their last four three-point attempts to pull within two. Well, and Abby Shoes made her last two three-point attempts, and she's done it by just change of pace. She's gone from being flat-footed to sprinting to get the ball off and get the shot in. Mitchell hands off to Chen. Mitchell rolls to the basket. Fights it up for two. Certainly Mitchell scored a little bit here today. She's got six. Columbia switching on that. Princeton rec recognizing that and hitting the bigger post on the roll. Three on the way from the freshman. Riley Weiss is off the mark. That inside, Nowecki. Nowecki can't get that to go, and Shoes got the rebound for Columbia. Lions have won 11 in a row since their loss to Princeton. They win here today, and they go to the NCAA tournament for the first time in program history. Plus Henderson takes it back outside. Six, now five on the shot clock. Collins on the turnaround. Did catch iron, and she has got it. Chia got caught in deep. Nowecki fights for the rebound. Last touched by Fliss Henderson. We talked about how much these two teams are switching on the screens that time. You see Ellie Mitchell rolling. Great lead pass by Caitlin Chin. Nice finish by Mitchell. So she's matched her point total from yesterday. Went for six yesterday, had 12 rebounds, five offensive rebounds in that win for the Tigers over Penn. Chen looks for St. Rose. St. Rose scores again. Princeton likes that matchup each time that Nichols has been on her. They have looked to post her up. I'm sorry, Nicole Stevens has been on her. They've looked to post her up. Here is Stevens, defended by Chen. And a legal screen called on Columbia's Rafu. Off the baseline, out of bounds play. You see Madison St. Rose just flash to the middle over the smaller Nicole Stevens and gets it up and in. First foul on Rafu. That's eight turnovers now for Columbia. Averaging 15 a game on the season. Mitchell on the handoff, and I think that's going to be a traveling call. Yes, traveling violation on Princeton. Turnover Tigers. That's their second. And Eric, for a team that wants to play with pace the way Columbia does, the turnover is twofold. Obviously, they're not getting a shot attempt, uh, but it just kills the pace of the game, and that's not what they want. They want to get this thing going up and down. Well, one thing that Megan Griffith said this morning about one of the keys, number one, transition is our game. They want to run, but two, ball security is key, and that's been an issue so far as they bring it into the front court, down by six. When I go back to it, in their loss at Princeton, it was the miscues, it was the turnovers that just allowed Princeton to just dominate in that matchup. And it's a little bit of that happening again here today. Weiss tracks down the long rebounds. Now the freshman on the drive, couldn't get it. Offensive rebound, the putback won't drop. The bit by Page. And a foul's going to be called on Princeton. It's going to be Sky Belker. Or is it Mitchell? Belker got it. That's her second. Both Mitchell and Belker. Now that's two on Belker, so she stays on the floor. And she was matched up with shoe. Yeah, that's not a good combination if you've got two personal fouls. Mitchell gets fouled trying to get the rebound. So now Belker will... Oh, will she? Yeah, she's got to check out of the game, right, with the two personal fouls. So she checks out, and Mari Pickley, freshman from Akron, Ohio, will come into the game. 
And Eric, one thing we've seen throughout this game is on dead ball out of bounds, what Columbia is doing is face guarding Caitlin Chen, basically trying to force someone else to initiate the offense up the floor. St. Rose for Mitchell. Bickley on the drive. Couldn't get it. Mitchell on the offensive glass. St. Rose couldn't get it. Mitchell got tangled up, kept it alive just long enough for Chen to put it up and in. And Mitchell won't get credit for an offensive rebound there, but she kept the ball alive. The shoe well off the mark. Good hustle attempt to try to save it for Kitty Henderson. Prince the ball. If you want to win a championship, it's the 50-50 balls. It's all about the effort. Ellie Mitchell keeps the ball alive. Caitlin Chen, right place, right time I, for Princeton. I know they're called 50-50 balls, but if Ellie Mitchell's in the area, it's more <laughs> like a 75-25 ball. Good luck with your 25% because that's how good she is. Her anticipation, her strength, her determination to get every rebound. Class being drift about that today. What makes her go so good? She goes, she never stops moving. And if you make contact with you, she used your leverage against her. And she said, let's be Frank, she always plays with a championship mindset when we go against her. Chen couldn't get it. Shoe's got the rebound. Shoe being hounded in the backcourt by Nowicki. Shoe, tough shot. And a foul called on Nowicki, and she disagrees, but Karen Prieto says, got her on the elbow. Well, it looked like Abby Shu was determined on this entire possession, and I agree with Chet Nowicki there. I didn't see any contact. First foul on Nowicki. Shu to the free throw line. For career point number 2,100, another one to come. Tonight, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN, men's hoop, NC State, North Carolina, meet in Washington for the ACC championship. How about the run by NC State, a 10 seed, making it to the championship, playing their fourth game in four days. You'll see that tonight on ESPN. Abby Shu continues to add to her scoring record at Columbia. Now over 2,100 points, as Christy mentioned before, she picked up career point number 2,000 in the win here against Princeton earlier this season when she went for 26 that game. It's really remarkable to think about over 2,000 points in a career. And the way Madison St. Rose is playing here today, she may have some aspirations of doing something similar. <laughs> foul on Collins, so that's two on Collins. Couple starters with two personal fouls for each team. And Madison St. Rose will go to the free throw line. Sophomore from Old Bridge, New Jersey. Second team all Ivy League selection. She was the rookie of the year in the Ivy League a season to go. Averaged nine points a game last year for a team that won in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Knocking off NC State before falling to Utah. She's upped her total this year to nearly 15 points a game. Here's one thing I'll say about Prince in the last two years, when national media was saying they upset. Maybe by seed alone, but if you've watched this Princeton team play over the years, you realize how good, how talented, how well coached they are. I don't consider the last two years their first round wins upsets by any means. Beat Kentucky two years ago, and as I mentioned, NC State last year. Collins stays on the floor with the two personal fouls, can't hit. There's an offensive rebound for Fliss Henderson. Shoe launches for three. Didn't score for the first nine minutes and 57 seconds of the game, but she's making up for lost time in the double figures now with 11. Chen, a little hesitation getting to the basket for two more. Great screen by Mitchell to free Chen up there. Six for Chen to go along with four assists. There's the matchup we all want to see, Chen versus Shu. Collins says, hang on a second, let me join the party. 
Second team all conference selection knocks it down for three. She's got eight. Back to a four point game. Columbia shooting 50% from three right now in this game. Already six made from, from deep. Three point shot is a big part of their offense. Number one in the Ivy making eight a game. Off the miss, Columbia perhaps building a little momentum here with 345 to go before halftime. Liz Henderson. And that's out of bounds. It will be Prince to basketball when we come back to Columbia. Well, the two biggest stars are putting on a show here in the first half. Caitlin Chin off the on-ball screen, all the way to the hoop for two for Princeton. And then Abby Shue from where else but from three for the Lions. Welcome back to ESPN's Champ Week. It's the Ivy League Women's Basketball Tournament presented by TIAA. Back inside Levy and Jim at Columbia University, just about ready for the start of the third quarter. The number one seed, Princeton, on top of the host. The number two seed, Columbia, by seven. Eric Free, Christy thomas Scuddy back with you here. Courtside, number one offense, Columbia. Number one defense, Princeton, going head-to-head -head here today. Advantage Princeton in their defense, you would think, looking at the scoreboard and how that first half played out. Well, they've been really good with their switches, and any shot that... Abby Shue has had has been very much contested. Now she's made three of them, and that's how good Abby Shue is. But so far, I've been really impressed with Princeton's defense. All right, let's go through the first half highlights. Princeton never trailed in that first half, up by seven here at the break. Well, and Columbia's hung in there because of their three-point shooting. Six of 16 in the first half. Cecilia Collins, 50%. Kitty Henderson, one for one. Abby Shue, three of nine. The degree of difficulty for Abby Shue, 10 of 10. But when she's gotten the space, she's made Princeton pay and Princeton's just been assertive in terms of getting their second chance opportunities extending plays why because Caitlin Chen 10 first half points she's done it with the catch and shoot she's done it off the bounce she's done it on offensive rebounds as well so let's get you caught up on our two stars Shu, the player of the year in the Ivy League didn't score until the final seconds of the first quarter knocked down three threes 11 points Caitlin Chen in the first half with 10 points, averaging just under 16 a game. A couple of other numbers inside the game. Rebounding, a plus four for Princeton in rebounding margin. And Princeton was a plus three in turnover margin as well in the first half. And Princeton wanted to get it inside, score in the paint, and they had success. 24 of their 34 in the paint. And it's been guards getting downhill and getting to the rim. It's been offensive rebound putbacks. It's been the bigs. But the other stat for Columbia, they're shooting a whopping 38% from three. They're all of three of 13 inside the arc. Better outside the arc than inside the arc so far against this Princeton defense. Tigers with the first possession of the second half. Belker kicks it to St. Rose. St. Rose can't get it on the baseline drive. And it was last touch by Columbia, Princeton basketball. It was really good execution of Princeton out of the brick flare screen on the weak side for Madison St. Rose. She just couldn't finish when she curled to the rim. A reminder of what's at stake. Princeton will get into the NCAA tournament no matter what. They are playing to be Ivy League tournament champions for a fifth straight year. Columbia needs a win to get into the tournament for the first time in program history. to St. Rose, nine to shoot. St. Rose from outside for two. Madison St. Rose in the double figures for the second consecutive game. She's got 10, went for 19 against Penn yesterday, and it's a nine point lead. Nice switching there by Princeton. Collins, tough shot. Every shot seems to be a tough, contested one for Columbia in this game. Well, and they're switching, and then they're switching out assignment specific, and you're seeing Princeton not just switch flat, they're switching up, and that's what's been causing uh, Columbia some issues in trying to get their shots off. Noweke, good strong move inside. No, and a rebound for Kitty Henderson. And that's going to be an offensive foul. 
called on Cecilia Collins. Well, prior possession, this is when you know that Madison St. Rose is feeling it. She's just measuring up the whole way and knocks down the big bucket. So Collins has three personals. Big call there, she'll stay on the floor. One of the top players for this Columbia team. Belker. St. Rose. And St. Rose is fouled by Bliss Henderson. That's her second. Caitlin Chen to trigger the inbound for the Tigers. Winners of four in a row, their last loss here in this building to Columbia. Chen, travel. Chen actually missed Madison St. Rose going through the elevator screens because she was already getting downhill. Otherwise, Madison St. Rose would have had an open three. Columbia in the Ivy Tournament Championship game for a second time. This is the sixth Ivy Madness Tournament. Columbia made it a couple years ago. Foul called here on Princeton. That's Mitchell's second personal foul. Even getting it in is a struggle right now for Columbia. Kitty Henderson against Chen, no. Rebound, battle four, last touch by Princeton, Columbia Ball. Right, so you talk about getting it in. Again, Princeton's switching the screens. It's the screeners who have to recognize that. There's slip opportunities, but Columbia has not been able to take advantage of it yet. St. Rose to jump into the passing lane and take it away for Princeton. Belker. Tough shot. Won't drop for the Wecky battled inside. And I think a foul's going to be called here on Chet Nowecki. That's her second personal foul. So already two team fouls for each team, and we are just now three minutes in to the third. Well, I think if you're Princeton as well as you've been playing defense in the half court, the last thing you want to do is put Columbia on the free throw line and let them start generating some offense. Collins and Nowecki gets her third. So what will Carla Barubi do? Will she leave Nowecki in the game with three? Looks so that way. Kitty Henderson won't drop. Second chance opportunity thanks to Rafu. Gonna be kicked. They'll put 20 on the shot clock for the Lions. Both these teams are getting opportunities at the rim. They're just not consistently finishing. I'm surprised Nowecki staying out there with the three. Honestly, the way Carla Ruby was raving about Nowecki earlier this week, I'm not. She has a lot of faith in the veteran. There's a three. Collins staying on the floor with three personal fouls. That move paying off for Columbia. She knocks down her third three-pointer. She's got 11. Chen makes tough shots time and again. Caitlin Chen. She doesn't even need to be squared when she lets go of the ball. That's what's so impressive about Caitlin Chen. I think if she was squared when shooting the ball, she wouldn't know what to do. <laughs> That's <laughs> too easy. She's just so used to being on an angle and off balance and off contact. So tough and savvy and showing the defense, but not much you can do if Cecilia Collins 
knocking down shots like that. She's got a team high 13 for the Lions. She knows she has the three fouls, so she immediately told Kitty Henderson to match up with Chen. St. Rose. Missed by much, and the rebound for Kitty Henderson. Henderson through traffic to shoe. Henderson on the drive, tried to make the piss pass down to Fliss Henderson, and an offensive foul is going to be called. Well, Cecilia Collins is feeling it right now. Elevates with the pull-up jumper there to knock it down. Kitty Henderson picks up her second personal foul for Columbia. Collins now goes to the bench for Columbia with the three fouls, and Nowecki goes to the bench for Princeton with her three fouls. Parker Hill back on the floor for Princeton. Perry Page for Columbia. And as well as Princeton's playing defense, they're not converting on the other end. Only a six-point lead right now, as well as they've played defensively. Throw back outside, Mitchell swings it to the corner, three-pointer on the way, no good. Offensive rebound, second chance, wide open look. Madison St. Rose for three. Back to a nine-point advantage for the Tigers. Shoe travels. Turnover, Columbia, Princeton ball when we come back. 4.31 to go in the third quarter. The Tigers matching their largest lead of the game up by nine. Princeton on top, third quarter here, Ivy League championship. The Tigers on top of Columbia, coached by Megan Griffith. Columbia class of 2007 was a scrappy, tough, determined point guard. For Columbia, we always like to joke around. She looks like she did in her playing days, and she could still play. And she still brings that intensity. And this is a passion project for her because it wasn't too long ago that Columbia was an afterthought in the Ivy League. But she came back to her alma mater now in her eighth season here, and she's completely turned it around. Five years ago, Christy, Columbia was eight and 19, four and 10 in the Ivy. They had a few hundred turning out for the games. Since then, 93 wins, 28 losses, 45 and 11 in Ivy League play. Well, she's now a feisty, intense <laughs> head coach. Well, she Let's can't turn that. off that feisty, intense piece, I'm guessing, though. No. Absolutely. But, I mean, here's the bottom line. Princeton has two losses in Ivy League play in the last two years, both to Columbia. What Megan Griffin has done here at Columbia is just truly remarkable. Getting them here in the championship game for the second time in three years. Chen off balance again, gets the roll. That drops down for two more. And for the first time tonight, Princeton leads by double figures, up 11. On the turnaround, too strong off the window. And Princeton had two players there with Hill and Mitchell. Neither could hold on to it. It's Columbia basketball. And this is where now on out-of-bounds plays, they've got to start stealing some points. They are shooting 24% inside the arc right now, shooting a whopping 41% from three. A reminder, Princeton, number one defense in the Ivy League, giving up just 56 points a game. And again, balls on the floor, jump ball possession arrow will keep it with Columbia. There's some teams that are good defensively, and it's about containment. They wait for you to make a miss or make a mistake, and they pounce. Princeton's a little bit of everything. We've seen them rotate, take the charges. We've seen them be disruptive in their switch outs right now. And it's really caused Columbia's half-court offense to be stagnant. Collins back on the floor out of that timeout. Here's Shu trying to back in Chen. Here's the double, and here's Collins. Credit Parker Hill there with that defensive stop. She went to double, and that caused you to pass it out, and then she just stayed in the paint, and that's what forced the pull-up jumper instead of getting all the way to the rim. Chia. St. Rose, and now Parker Hill looks to post up. Too strong. Mitchell, who else? Kept it alive for Princeton. Second chance here. 
Chia uses the screen and knocks down the three. Ashley Chia, the freshman, hits the three, and Princeton stretches it to a 14-point lead. It's an 8-0 run for the Tigers. Page. Henderson. Nice switch by Parker Hill yet again. Page will launch a three. Won't drop in, and good hustle on the glass by Perry Page. It was Raffu on the miss, Page on the rebound, my correction. Well, again, Ellie Mitchell, second chance opportunity for Princeton, and Chia makes them pay with a three. The second chance points now for Princeton, up to 15 in this game. Mitchell will head to the bench. St. Rose as well. Nowecki's back on. Collins will head out. Rafu as well. And it'll be Perry Page going to the free throw line. Perry Page, last year as a freshman, played in 20 games off the bench before a season ending injury against Penn. So she could not experience the postseason for Columbia last year. They lost to Harvard at Ivy Madness in the semifinals, but then they went on to the WNIT title game where they lost to Kansas. So they had a very impressive postseason run. And again, the double team on Chen off of the free throw. Belter across half court. To Chia. Chen. Nowecki trying to post up inside on Shu. Nowecki turns left, gets the roll. Again, Princeton continues to dominate in the paint here at Columbia. Now the 30 paint points for the Princeton. Henderson, shut off on the dribble, gets a little creative, why not? First points in the second half for Kitty Henderson. She's got six. And Princeton's so locked in on Shu. Who can pick up the scoring punch for Columbia in the half court? Shu has not scored here in the second half. Matter of fact, Christy, she hasn't attempted a shot. Meanwhile, shots continue to fall for Princeton. Chia has seven. What is Princeton doing so well that keeps you even from attempting a field goal in this game? Well, they're not helping off of her. So you see her going into the far corner. Any dribble penetration, they've stayed locked in. They're willing to let other players, or they're forcing other players to make shots. And right now you can see shoes just sped up. Sped up, out of rhythm. It's impacting Columbia because now they're down by 14 in the final minute of the third quarter. Meanwhile, Princeton hitting again on the offensive end. And that's just put more pressure on Columbia's half-court offense, and Chia is just feeling it right now in the half-court. Chia with seven, Chen leading the way with 14. St. Rose right behind her with 13. Oh, we're seeing some zone now by Columbia in the half-court. So Princeton does what they do well. They'll shoot over that zone, and Shia heating up, knocks down the three. She's in the double figures with 10. Princeton on top by 17 here in the third. Henderson, good move, and finish, and one. by Kitty Henderson and Columbia. After the big three by Princeton, there's the switch. Chet Nowicki is on her, and she gets by her, gets even, and uses her arm to extend it and draw the fourth foul on Chet Nowicki. So Nowicki goes to the bench with that fourth foul. Mitchell back on, and one free throw now for Kitty Henderson. Shot clock off, Princeton will hold for one. Defense! 
Mitchell. Belker. Gia, good feed inside. Finished by Hill. And that is it for the third quarter. What a performance by Princeton on top big here at Columbia, heading to the fourth. Chris is doing a great job setting screens. They're getting advantages off the bounce. Columbia is chasing, and that's allowing Princeton to get great looks at the basket. This time, Parker Hill to put. That is not the official mas uh, mascot of the Princeton Tigers. Except no imitations or substitutes, but he looks like he's having a good time. The Princeton fans, of course, having a good time. They've come here to Manhattan, and they've had pl plenty to cheer about. Their team is on top by 17 here in the fourth. They did add a second to the game clock and the shot clock, which is important here because four seconds on the shot clock here for the Tigers out of the Princeton timeout. St. Rose has to go in a hurry. Finds Mitchell, who gets rid of it in time. Caught some iron. Rebound for Shue. Columbia needs to play with pace now. Don't need to set up for threes. They do. They can't afford to have empty possessions. Abby Shue gives it up. And Mitchell stood her ground defensively again, and it was last touched by Columbia. Princeton ball. I mean, Ellie Mitchell has played great defense on her feet. That time she did it from her rear end. You're telling me she's giving it her all here with a championship on the line yet Wait, again. Good job cleaning that up for me. <laughs> There's Belker. The freshman will bring it back out. The poise of Princeton against any of the full court pressure of Columbia has been really nice to watch here today. They haven't been sped up. They've read the defense. They've passed it weak side a number of times just to the open player to break any kind of full court pressure. Foul on Rafu. That's her third, fourth team foul. So free throws from here on in for Princeton. I would run and jump at Chen here, get it out of her hands, make someone else have to create. And there's Chen. a trap. There it is. Chen finds Belker on the backdoor cut. <laughs> 17 points, six assists for Caitlin Chen. Shu, yes. Just the second field goal of the second half for Abby Shu. She's got 17 and a timeout called by Columbia. We'll be back in 30 seconds. One kale, celery, swirl? Yeah. Cash or charge? Charge. Sorry, game time. Here late game, Caitlin Chen out of the double team, keeps her dribble, finds her buddy with the backdoor court. And then on the other end, Abby Shu relocates. All she needs is that half step ahead of the defender to get the shot off. That step has not been allowed by Princeton for the most part here in the second half. Shu with just two field goal attempts in the second half. Now pressure from Columbia out of the Lions timeout. Chen. Throws it up to St. Rose. Underneath Nowecki, great movement by Princeton for the layup. Just another example how Princeton has just handled the full court pressure here this afternoon. Three-pointer is off the mark from Kitty Henderson. And it will be Princeton basketball. Collins and Mitchell got tangled up. I think it's going to be a foul here on, on Collins. She was Collins, yeah. Mitchell there. I only know that because the teams are walking to the other end, and Ellie Mitchell's got a nice little sly smile on her face right now. So Collins picks up her fourth personal. <laughs> Riley Weiss back into the game. Two free throws for Ellie Mitchell.
She's in the double figures now with 10. A reminder, ACC Men's Championship coming up tonight, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Can NC State keep their Cinderella run going? The 10 seed playing their fourth game in as many days, taking on the number one seed, North Carolina. Again, 8.30 Eastern on ESPN. Great tip out by Belker there. Mitchell has a double-double, 10 and 10, and then Chen threw it away. I don't think Carla Barubi is upset with Caitlin Chen too often. This is one of the times <laughs> where I, I, I don't think she's too happy. Again, reading the body language. Closing in on two minutes to go here in the Ivy Tournament Championship game. Kitty Henderson leans in for two. Into the front court, nothing called. It's going to be Columbia basketball. They say St. Rose just lost it out of bounds. 151 to go. She's going to be the one initiating this offense now. Belker's going to pick her up just a couple of steps across half court. Chu tries to be a facilitator, and it works out. Collins. Offensive foul. Another charge taken by Princeton and Collins is fouled out. Huge defensive stand and who else but the defensive player of the year, Ellie Mitchell rotating over to draw the fourth charge of the afternoon against Columbia. Collins finishes with 13 points. Both coaches trying to steal a timeout here. Here's Megan Griffith gets the 30 seconds to sub a player in. I saw Ellie Mitchell take a critical charge late in the game in a tight game against Penn in the semifinals yesterday. Takes the charge here. Nowecki's got it, and Nowecki will be fouled. 52% free throw shooter, so that's who Columbia would love to have at the free throw line. The problem is, minute 39 to go, and it's a 17-point game. Princeton has never trailed here today. Columbia made some mini runs, but nothing sustained. Princeton always found an answer on defense, and they were efficient on offense. I think that's the number one thing. Every time Columbia looked to try to generate any momentum, Princeton had the answer. And usually that answer was Caitlin Chin. And if it was defense, it was Ellie Mitchell. Again, Mitchell a double-double. 10 points, 10 rebounds. Chen, 17 points on 7 of 12 shooting and 6 assists. One of two for Nowecki. Here comes Shu in a hurry. Up to Weiss. They don't need to waste time trying to get threes. They just need points. Well, Shu's going to launch anyways. And what do I know? She says, <laughs> Christy, I got a three here. She's trying. It's a 15-point game now. St. Rose in trouble, finds Chen. Chen, no need to take it to the basket. They need to work some clock. Knocked away from behind by Weiss. Now to Mitchell. Bit of a scramble right now. And out of all that, there's 11 on the shot clock for Princeton. Belker tried to feed it inside. Touched by Shu. And it'll be Princeton basketball with six on the shot clock and 60 seconds on the game clock. St. Rose with five on the shot clock. Has it rejected. Gets it back in the corner. Back out top. And a foul is going to be called as Ellie Mitchell was trying to launch a three as the shot clock expired. Tough break for Columbia there if this stands, because this is actually Ellie Mitchell's first three-point attempt on the season. So the official just came over. They're trying to make sure that she was in the shooting motion before the shot clock went off. So that's why they're going to the monitor right now. Let's take a sneak peek. The shot clock is pretty low right now. 
I don't think I don't think she got it. It's interesting. I was about to say I think she did. <laughs> I was looking at the shot clock. I didn't look at the one underneath. Yeah, the one on the basket support. So they're going to take a moment here to review this. We reset things. 15 point game. Princeton on top. They've won four in a row since losing here in this building to Columbia. Oh, it's bang bang. And Eric, you would be correct. The officials are saying the foul occurred just right before it hit zero. So the foul on Rafu will send Mitchell to the free throw line to shoot three free throws. and Princeton to get through here and they'll be celebrating another Ivy Tournament title. We talked about what Megan Griffin has done here at Columbia, but what Carla Berube continues to do at Princeton's outstanding. They hold on to this lead. This will be her 100th win as the head coach of Princeton. And how many losses? 16. 16. In five years, that's the averaging momentum, 20 a year. The momentum and success was built by Courtney Banghart during her long, successful run at Princeton. Now, of course, the coach at North Carolina. Carla, as we mentioned before, had great success at the Division Three level at Tufts. Stepped in and has kept the momentum going and had to navigate a postseason where there wasn't a postseason thanks to COVID. And then the Ivy League didn't play in the 2020-2021 season. But if you think back over the last several years, 2019, Princeton won the title. Then there was no tournament in 2020, no tournament in 2021. And in 2022, they beat Columbia, Princeton did in the final. Caitlin Chen was the most outstanding player, by the way. And Carla said after that, I remember, it was just so special because the entire season before that didn't happen. It was like that throughout the Ivy League. The year was taken away, and Princeton just finds the way time and again to pick up the wins. Henderson to the basket, lays it in. That's Fliss Henderson for two. Great execution by Columbia out of the timeout. Quick score there. And now it's just keep away by Princeton. Chen with the catch at midcourt. Dribbling through trouble, still in trouble, and a timeout being called by Carla Barubi. That will leave Princeton with two. We saw this last night against Penn with Princeton. Just a little sloppy down the stretch in terms of just closing the door on the opponent. So the teams will huddle up with 40.7 to go here in the fourth quarter. Ivy Madness continues tomorrow here at Levy and Jim at Columbia. It'll be the number four seed Brown, the hottest team in the Ivy League right now. They've won seven in a row. They stunned Princeton today. 90-81 was the final. Brown trying to make their first trip to the NCAA tournament since 1986. They'll get there with a win, but they'll have to get through a Yale team that went 11 and 3 in Ivy League play and they knocked off Cornell. So that's coming up tomorrow, noon Eastern time on ESPN 2. So we'll be watching basketball, some championships on the women's side as well. Patriot League title coming up tomorrow. And then we'll all settle in for Selection Sunday. And the women's reveal exclusively on ESPN, 8 o'clock Eastern time. And we will know the field of 68. Eric, before we move on to March Madness, hats off for Ivy Madness here this weekend to Columbia as well as the Ivy League. This has quickly become one of my favorite events of all year. The support of the fans has been electric. This has been an amazing environment the last two days. A reminder, Princeton with two timeouts remaining. If they need to use one here, if they get in trouble getting it in, they don't have trouble. They get it in the Chen. We'll try to dribble out some time, find St. Rose. Columbia hasn't given a foul as of yet. Looking for the steal, not getting it. Time continues to tick away. Now eight on the shot clock. 
And now Shu will foul with seven on the shot clock. Right, There's going to be so many little things in this game to take away, but the thing that jumps out is the job that Princeton did defensively. Now, Abby Shu still has 20 points. She's gone for 20 for an 18th time this season, but they kept her quiet for long periods of time. That's the player of the year in the Ivy League right there. Not many teams, if any, have been able to do that for an extended period of time, and Princeton knew she was the key to keep her quiet for as long as possible. Absolutely, and I thought what Princeton did so well was the switches. They weren't soft switches. They switched out to try to prevent her from getting those looks, and they stayed true to the game plan for 40 minutes. Timeout call with 26.8 to go. After St. Rose came through at the free throw line, we'll have to see who the most outstanding player of the tournament will be. It's been a couple of good games for Ellie Mitchell. She had a good game against Penn. She's got a double-double here today with 12 points and 10 rebounds, but May I suggest Madison St. Rose for your consideration. Had a team high 19 points against Penn, and she has a team high 18 points. And for a young player, a sophomore, played at a high level last year, she has played like such a mature player. She has really stood out here in this tournament. I mean, she played with such poise, but also Moxie. I just go back to a couple of those pull-up jumpers she had early in the third quarter, just measuring up the defense. Like at no point did she ever think she would miss. And that's impressive for the young guard. Six of 12 from the field today, perfect four for four from the free throw line, including the last two points to put Princeton back on top by 17. Columbia was pointing at this moment when they were hosting the Ivy League tournament. There was a period of time not too long ago where they asked the school photographer to keep the photos of their players really tight on faces because the seats were empty behind the players. This place was packed here, right from the very start here today. And they were hoping they were going to be able to celebrate a first ever trip to the NCAA tournament. But it looks like that will not be the case. Columbia will have to wait because it's Princeton's time now. The Tigers have come to Columbia. They've done it again. For the fifth straight time, the Tigers are Ivy Madness champions, and it's back to the NCAA tournament. Coach Megan Griffith and the Columbia team waiting to salute their rivals from Princeton after their celebration. There will be more games for Abby Shu. There will be postseason for Columbia. Remember, they made a run to the title game of the WNIT a season ago. But the Ivy season comes to a close. Yeah, I got to believe that Columbia's got to be considered for the WBIT, the new postseason tournament hosted by the NCAA, and I think they're very deserving to get an invitation to that event. And let's be frank, Columbia's not going anywhere. What Megan Griffin has built here is sustainable. They will obviously miss Abby Shu and Paige Lauder, but there's a lot of young talent on this ball club that they'll build on from this season. Ellie Mitchell handling the honors to put the Princeton logo, and they've got that ticket to the NCAA tournament. New year, same result for Princeton. Defense continues to get better and better for this program, and Carla, Carla Berube, all she does is just continue to win. The smile's wide. They know how to celebrate. They're going to get their T-shirts on here just to make sure because they can't start taking photos yet until they have their head coach with them. Their head coach is joining us right now, Carla Baruri. Carla, here is okay? Yes, I can. Congratulations. I know this never gets old, but what oh. was the difference here today? Because this was such an impressive performance on both ends of the floor. Um, I mean, it, it, it always comes down to the, to the defense for us, I thought. Um, we were just really locked in. I thought we were really, really focused. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we just did a great job. 
did a great job with their um, their sets that they ran. Um, yeah, Abby Shu is Abby Shu, and she's going to get her points. Um, but I thought we made her work. Um, I thought they didn't get anything easy at the rim for the most part, um, and you know kept them off the boards. And I thought the the rebounding game was key. The transition defense game was key. And then um, yeah, we made shots. We, we got to the rim too, and um, Caitlin got us fired up. I think that the I, I said this the first five minutes were really really key to us, and I thought we came out uh, just playing with a, a, a great purpose. You mentioned Abby Shu. Obviously, she still had 20, but can you talk about the keys to trying to limit her here this evening? Yeah, you, you just you, you can't let her just get open on the three. You can't let her, you know, get uh, just looks. Um, and I thought we did a good job of, of getting her off the three. That that shots were were difficult, um, and and then kind of shut down or tried to shut down others um, and not let them. And I thought they had a few threes that maybe we could have done a better job with in the first half, um, and did a, a did a much better job in that second half. Carla, congratulations on your 100th win at Princeton. I oh. think you'll always remember that. You didn't know, now no, you do. No idea. <laughs> uh, well. This is this is a great victory. I'm so proud of my team. I'm so proud of Princeton the University, our athletic department. Um, this is this is just awesome. Good luck in the so, NCAA tournament. So proud of these girls. Yeah. Good yeah. luck in the NCAA tournament where right. you've played so well in the past few years too. Congratulations, right. Carla Barubi, the head Thank coach you. for the Princeton Tigers, as they win at 75-58 is the final. And they were led again, and you heard what Carla had to say about Caitlin Chen. Caitlin gets it done with her performance on the court, but it sounds like she was the motivational speaker as well, that she was getting her teammates fired up a little bit. Caitlin joins us right now. How about it, Caitlin? What did you have to say to your team before this championship game? I mean, I just told them that let's just take it one play at a time, like just stay level-headed, stay excited. like. We're just happy to be here and just play with that type of like poise and mentality, you know? Caitlin, you play with such joy. <laughs> I mean, it's joy, it's joyful for me to watch you, but because of that joy, I feel like you steady your teammates so much. And there were a period there early that I know Ellie Mitchell was getting a little emotional. Talk about your leadership in those moments with your team. I mean, I think I just learned it best from Julia Cunningham, Maggie Connolly, and Grace Stone last year. Like, I spent the past two years playing with them and they always had that poise and composure that I always looked up to and I just hope to provide that to my younger teammates too. Well let's show everybody some of that playing with joy today some of your highlights from today Caitlin and really we're going to show some of the offensive highlights but I think it started with the defensive intensity today did it not? It definitely did I mean we came in with a different mentality today and we were locked in and focused on our game plan and I thought we executed really really well today. And of course, you executed on offense. We joked around that you wouldn't know what to do if you were square to the basket, that everything for you is knocked off balance. What kind of pride do you have in wearing the Princeton colors and winning another championship? Because that's all you've known in your time at Princeton. I mean, wearing the Princeton colors is so special. I mean, it's a testament to all the greats that came before us. Like, they set us up for this type of success, and they set the standard, and we're just here to follow it. Well, enjoy this championship and best of luck in the NCAA tournament. Thank you so much. Caitlin, Caitlin Chen, Ivy League champion yet again. She can't miss out on the photos because they're going on without her. <laughs> what a moment for Princeton. Another championship to celebrate Ellie.